The first thing that the, that the NIV does is it attacks the gospel and the person of Jesus Christ. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. Remember that God's rest is, is being used as a picture of salvation in Hebrews chapter 4, but in, in Hebrews chapter 3, we're comparing the wilderness, the people in the wilderness for 40 years, not being able to enter into the promised land is a picture of not being able to be saved through unbelief. Let me read you Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 5 and verse number 6 from the King James Bible. Look what it says. It says, And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, talking about salvation, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of, here it is again, how many times do we have to say it? Unbelief. What's gonna, why, why is any man gonna go to hell? He's, he's gonna go to hell. Look, every man's a sinner. But why will some sinners go to hell and some sinners not go to hell? Because of unbelief, that's why. But look what the NIV says. So we just see this again and again and again. God's rest is salvation. And why didn't the people go into the promised land? Because of unbelief. Why aren't you gonna be saved? Unbelief, unbelief, belief, unbelief. This is just over and over and over. Now look at the NIV in verse number five. And it says, and again, the passage above, he says, they shall never enter my rest. Verse six, therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, read along in your, in your King James Bible. And since those who formerly had the good news, that's what, that's what modern churches constantly call the gospel, by the way, the good news, okay? Proclaim to them that did not go in because of their disobedience. Whoa. That, that, look, it says it changes unbelief to disobedience. What is disobedience? Disobedience, it, look, if my children are disobedient to me, you know what that means? It means they're not doing what I say they're supposed to do. You see what we did here? We just turned, we just turned the gospel into works-based salvation in one verse in the Bible. If you're disobedient, how many times have you heard that out soul winning? Believe in Jesus, but you have to be obedient. Look, this is not harmless because people believe this. False prophets False teachers are getting up and they're using this verse to attach works to salvation. Go to Mark chapter 10 and verse 24. Look, folks, I can't give you all the examples. I can't give you all the examples where the, the NIV is, is discrediting the gospel, is discrediting our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I can't give you all the examples. I can just give you, I can just give you um, a few. Go to Mark chapter 10, look at verse number 24. And Jesus looked around about and said unto his disciples, how heartily shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered again and said unto them, children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? Look, he's saying it's hard for them that trust in riches, because what do you have to trust in to be saved? Believe on equals trust, folks. You have to trust in Jesus. And if you're trusting in something else, it's gonna be impossible for you to get saved. This is what Jesus is saying. He's saying it's gonna be hard for somebody who trusts in riches to get saved. He didn't say it's impossible for a rich person to go to heaven, but it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Why? Because of the verse before, they're trusting in riches folks, but look what the NIV does. So why was it, why did Jesus say it was hard for that man to go to heaven? It was hard for him to go to heaven because, not because of work that he had to do, but because what he was trusting in. You have to remove, look, you have to repent. Meaning, what does repent mean? It means to change your mind. You have to repent, you have to change your mind from trusting in riches, in your works, in whatever you're trusting in, in Buddha, in Muhammad, in whatever else you're trusting in, and you have that, turn from that, change your mind, and trust only on Jesus. That's it. That's why, but for somebody that's trusting in, in riches, Jesus is basically saying, it's impossible if you're trusting in riches to get saved. And that's the truth. But let's look at what the, the NIV says. The NIV says in verse number 24, 
where the Bible says, how hard is it for them that trust in riches? Here's what the NIV says. The disciples were amazed at his, this is the NIV. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? End verse. The NIV here is saying that it's hard to enter into the kingdom of God. Look, is it hard to receive a gift? It is not hard to enter into the kingdom of God. Few will enter, but it's because they're trusting something else. It's not hard. They, they took out the trusting part. They took out the trusting in riches part of the Bible. So the NIV makes salvation, it adds works to salvation, and it makes it hard. It makes it hard to be saved. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 18. Look at your, your King James Bible. The Bible says, For preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, foolishness but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. I, I have those words, which are saved, underlined in my Bible. Because here's the thing, folks. You're either saved or you're not. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you have everlasting life, it says in John chapter 3, verse number 36. It's, it's in a moment. And then you're sealed by the Holy Spirit, it says in Ephesians chapter 1. It's in a moment when you trust on Him. It's done just like that. You are saved or you are not saved, depending on whether you have believed or you are still in unbelief. Here's what the NIV says. Here's what the NIV says. It says, for the message of the cross it is foolishness to those who are perishing. That, that, that's pretty close. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The NIV turns salvation into a process. How many people have you talked to, soul winners at the door, who believe that salvation is a process? Who believe that not only do you have to, you know, have faith, but you have to go through this process of living this life and living for the Lord and following the commandments, they'll say. Just, look, the only way salvation is a process is if you have to work to get it. You are not being saved. You either are saved or are not saved. The NIV destroys the gospel, is what I'm trying to get you to understand. It adds works to the gospel. It makes salvation hard, it says. And it makes salvation this process that we must get through in our lives. This is works-based salvation. 